Uh, hey, everybody. So, um, this is a quick one. I'm Michael, for everybody who doesn't know me. Uh, quick introduction, I'm a business apps MV applications MVP. I work as a manager of experience tech, and I know that nobody knows what that means. I love this confusing title. Uh, I work as a Power Platform Consultant, Solution Architect, and uh, I can focus on the most fun topics in the Power Platform governance and administration. Um, yeah, I am a speaker and a blogger, if I'm not horribly overworked, which I am right now at the moment. As you can see on the left side, I've been uh, busy in the community last year. This is all 2022, and I really have to change that. Um, and yeah, I'm almost afraid to say that I work uh, part-time as a graphic designer, but I saw Hugo's awesome power page earlier, so... Maybe I should step back and let it do, uh, let him take over. All right. Um, now I'm clicking and nothing's happening. So, yeah. Okay, here we go. David said, Dataverse environment permissions for Power Platform. That's a mouthful. Staring a little bit of Azure and a little bit of Dataverse. And this is actually one of my favorite features in the last couple of weeks, actually. I'm going to blog about it if I have time. So, But I thought uh, when David asked, I might uh, show you as well. Um, and Dataverse environment permissions is a very long word and a very long term. It's basically known as Dataverse Teams. Not Data Wars for Teams, but Data Wars Teams. There's a little bit confusing naming, actually. And um, yeah, sorry for the for the theme and the colors. I was a little bit inspired by the 80s uh, when I made this presentation. But yeah, now you have to go through it. Okay, Data Wars Teams. Um, I have a little story for you. Um, meet LTSU. LTSU Security is a security company. Um, the LTSU basically stands for uh, Lock This Stuff Up. And they are a security company providing security solutions for their customers. And LTSU is awesome, as you can see from the logo. And since they are awesome, they are using the Power Platform. So what they have, they have a special sales team. That's called the security sales team. And they do have their own environment. They realized and they know that uh, if they want to provide the best service for their customers, they do have to utilize the Power Platform and they know their governance, so they come up with an environment just for their sales team. In this environment, they use basically Canvas apps, model-driven apps, flows, and Power Virtual Agents. They're not really a fan of Power BI, I don't know why they're. And as you can see here in the corner, they have a security group, and this pointer should be flashy, but doesn't work. Ah, okay. So they have um, a security group in there so that not everybody in the whole company has access to this environment because they have a database attached to their environment, obviously, as you can see, and they have their customer data in there. And they are pretty huge and uh, successful company. As you can see from some of their customer brands, they got like, Asamon and the, the, the brand down there. That's one of my favorites, Ghostboards. So they have huge customers, right? And um, so that is the initial idea. If you have customer data, you don't want to have everybody in your company have access to this data. So they put it in their own environment, locked it up with a security group. So just people in security sales business unit are able to access those data, which is smart, which is nice. All right. They have a huge team. As you can see from these huge brands, they have a lot of data and these are huge customers. And you, this is not a job for just a few people. They need a huge, huge team to work with all this data. And um, what you usually do, if you want to handle lots of data in a very appropriate day, you use a Power App. For example, Customer Success App to just handle all this data according to your needs so that it doesn't get confusing. So that's what happened at LTSU. They have their security sales environment, they have so many customers with so many data, so they come up with this customer success app and they're using that. And since the team is quite a lot, there are lots of team members actually up here, um, oh yeah, they are not just working for all the customers. They have key account managers and people who work just with certain customers, as you can see here, some of them are just working for this orange brand, some with this white off-white brand, and some for this uh, for this blue company, whatever that may be. And the point is, as soon as you as you start to utilize a power platform within those data was environments, you will need certain roles within this environment. You, I think, you are pretty much all aware of those. And in this environment, we need some system admins, some makers, and some users, because not everybody needs to get uh, edit rights on every uh, on this data. 
um, but some are just users. So this is kind of a thing that I would usually usually start with. I go to the admin center, I go for my uh, users in the environment, and I would assign the security role according to their needs. But as you can see, this team is kind of huge and big, and it gets even bigger. So um, in the beginning, I can do that. If I have like 10, 15 people or user in my environment, then I can assign the user group the security role, which I've indicated here in those designs. Um, I can do that manually, but when the team grows, as you can see, it does grow, then it gets like a lot. And luckily, we do have Dataverse teams. So now it's uh, still more people coming. The company is growing, which is great. Still growing. Okay, at a certain point, you won't assign security roles manually anymore. So that now it's time for Dataverse Teams, the demo. Woohoo. Okay, and now I need to um, switch over. Uh, great, got all my emails open here. This one is good. Okay. You can still see my screen, right? Yeah, that looks good. Okay, I'm here in my Power Platform Admin Center and I have this security sales. This is my environment that it's, it's all about. And let me show you real quick. Yes, I do have a security group here, SEC security sales security group. So everyone who is part of the security group can access this data. Um, I wanna show you real quick how it looks in Azure because I've created a few more groups actually. And let's see. Uh, AAD groups, here are my groups. Let's see. Down here, make a little bit bigger. Here's my security group um, that handles the environment. And I created three more groups because sometimes I need to reach multiple people at, one, at, uh, at once. So I have my security sales admin security group, my uh, security sales maker security group, and the user security group. Basically, they are according to the rules and roles that I need in my environment. So what I do usually, if I go to settings and let's check my users. I have a few of them here. Um, so Andreas, if I would like to see, uh, to get him the, the correct security role, this is usually what you start. You select the security role and assign it to him and that's the point. But I do have many users now and I need to uh, assign um, the security roles to multiple people. So it doesn't work in the uh, user settings. It might uh, work in the security roles set, uh, settings. If I, that was my first idea actually. When I just click a user role, let's say basic user, and then I click on members, that sounds like I could add multiple members at once, but I can only add people here. So once again, I can search for a mail, an email address, or a team name. And this little indicator is quite of important, actually. Um, I thought at first I could um, assign a group here. Uh, security says admin, for example. And if I try that, security sales, nope. No user or teams found, because this is really important. It says teams and not groups. So I was trying to add a group. And that where I started, there was a point where I started to work because I'm really lazy. Um, let's go all the way back. This is on the front page. Luckily, I have my teams here. And if I click on that, I click on the teams. I have just the basic team that is created when you create the environment. If you create a new team, then what I do usually, I create a team for each of my groups that I have here. And I will start with the admins and just show you this one example. Uh, I will just copy the name. As I mentioned, I'm really lazy. So I will create a new team and I call it Sex Sales Admin Team. Uh, I will use the description for the moment. The business unit, I only have one within this environment. Um, uh, administrator, uh, so, because, so I, I will put in my admin account right now and the team type, I use the owner type. Um, because I want that team to not only have a security role, but to own their records, basically. And if I click on next, now here's the cool part actually about it. So loading is not the cool part. Okay. Um, I can add now team members. And let's see. 
that's um, I will just add this one team member for the moment and now I can choose my security role and it all looks very basic right now what do I, uh, what am I looking for environment maker let's go with that one Here we go. Now we have that team. And still, going. the point is, and you can't really see or show that. Okay, if I manage the security role, no, I can just see the security role here. The, the point is, everyone who is a member of this team also now inherits the security role that I gave to this team, which is the environment maker role, which was a little bit stupid because this is the uh, admin team. So maybe I should correct that. Um, this is the admin team, so they shouldn't have the role environment maker, but the system administrator role. Um, where we are, here we go. Now everybody who's part of that team will get the security role and the thing that I really like about it, what I usually do with every customer I have, and I hardly see that out there in the world with my customers, I use those teams and hook them up with uh, security groups from Azure. Because th that way, um, I can assign security roles and manage the security level, not on a, on a user basis, but on a group basis. And this one is really cool. I can even go a little bit further if I... Um, came up with the, with those groups and I have a group for all my uh, different people and my roles. Uh, pop, 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 let's see, there was the admin role, the maker role and the user role as well. This one is just for the environment, the security group to secure that environment. So everyone is part of that group, everyone in the security sales department. And then according to their role, they get one of those groups. What happens when I use those groups as well is that when I have a, an app or a flow that I want to share, I can share with the whole with with the whole group, so then it's easy to see and set with sharing the app um, to set the set their uh, access rights straight, because this is basically done. If I have do I have my app here? Yep, the sales security sales customer success app. If I want to share it, and I just want to share it with my admin team, for example, I will see those mails here. And I know that the security roles are set up up front. So this makes it really easy to, um, yeah, to set who is allowed to see which data and who can do what in this environment. And the cool thing is, oh, no, that wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, so, and the cool thing is basically like on SharePoint, you will manage the whole thing on a group level and not on a um, on a user level. So if I would sum it up, that the benefits are, and this is the point is actually the Dataverse environment permissions for Power Platform or Dataverse Teams, I can hardly see that out there in the wild, which is a shame because um, you have a very granular level of access and security within your environments. And even within those environments, you can see who is allowed to use which data or who's only to see which, which data. The approach is based on groups, so you don't need to manage individual user. That that makes it makes it super easy to scale it up or down. I was demonstrating that earlier. When the team is growing, then it's really really easy to add people to this um, database team. And the cool part, which I really like, is in the Azure ID connector, you have this action add user to group, and then you can add your users to those ID groups. And that basically means that you assign security roles with Power Automate. So would somebody please think about the security roles? So you are not only um, adding your user to the groups, but in the end to the security role, because the security role is linked to the group with the team. This makes it pretty easy and pretty cool. You can build really cool onboarding processes with that that are fully automated, which I really like. And sharing apps and flows with members of, of the group is really easy. And um, that is basically Dataverse teams. The naming is really confusing. Confusing though, I've seen. Uh, I think Chris Huntingford was talking about Dataverse team groups. That was his idea for naming it to uh, distinguish it from teams and teams teams. Um, it's a little bit confusing, and maybe that's the only reason I don't see it uh, with my customers. 
So it was a little bit, uh, yeah, a little showcase of my favorite feature in the last time in my in my governance uh, project, basically. And the one thing that I have to say, or LTSU have to has to say, is oh, thank you very much. Thank you.